Hello, welcome to Solar Life, and in this episode, we're going to discuss our generator, how we chose it, installation considerations, maintenance, upgrades, and modifications that we've made to it. It's been a really dark month so far, and we're using the generator a lot more often than normal to keep the batteries charged up so that we can get through to the next sunny period. I was hoping that was gonna to be today, but it's cloudy again, and we're not making much power with our panels, we're really just barely covering the load of the house. The dark season of early winter makes us rely on the generator more than any other time of year because of the large draw for heating and low solar potential of the shortest days of the year. A generator for an off-grid house does more than just charge the batteries though. You can also use it to run high amperage tools like welders, power tools and other things like pumps and air compressors without drawing power from the batteries. You can also use it to equalize the batteries when the solar is spotty because of cloud cover. We chose an 11 kilowatt model because our solar technician said it would be compatible with our inverter charger and would have the output to charge the batteries efficiently. When the generator is running, it produces about 60 amps going into the inverter, and this can charge the batteries at about 10% per hour of runtime. We can charge up completely in about five hours. Our solar system is about nine kilowatts and can reach as high as 70 to 90 amps on a sunny day because the two panel arrays are on separate charge controllers. This makes the solar system capable of charging the house in less time than the generator, but only on a really sunny day, usually about three hours of pure sunlight, even in the winter. We went with a propane generator for several reasons. One, because the standby generator has an auto start function, we did not want to have to fill a tank with gasoline in the cold. We already had a propane system, so it would really just be one fuel type to deal with and less risk overall. Gasoline uh, here has ethanol in it, and this does not store well, especially in the winter, and can cause issues with carburation and proper firing of the engine. Propane can be stored in larger quantities, so we have enough to last over a year. In a grid down situation, there is no power to pump gas at the gas stations, but propane can still be accessed and refilled. And finally, it burns cleaner than gasoline and it's a byproduct of the petroleum industry rather than a primary product. I went with Generac because it was locally available and there are parts and service options in the nearest city. So I can get parts and repair it or have it repaired by a qualified technician if needed. However, parts and service are limited to a few small companies that don't carry parts, so they order direct from factory, which makes it difficult to get parts quickly. On the flip side, I'm working with a small business on my end, and they're nice, they're friendly, and they're helpful. In any case, if the generator goes down, we could be without it for a long time while we arrange service, wait for parts, or try to replace it if needed. Our generator has worked perfectly since we had it installed in 2018, and we've made a few modifications and upgrades to the generator since then. The first major upgrade that we did was to build a shed around the generator. This was to protect the generator from ice and snow and provide space to work on it during the winter if necessary. For the first two years, I had to shovel out the generator every time it snowed, and it's a ground-mounted unit, so the air intakes are low and on the sides. They'd get plugged up with snow and keep the engine from performing properly or cooling itself properly. The generator shed is a year old, and although it's a little large, it made it possible to work on the generator even during a snowstorm or a rainstorm. The downfall of the generator shed is that the exhaust creates an atmosphere of toxic fumes inside the shed and it is that also lowers the oxygen going into the carburetor as well. To fix this, I extended the pipe to the muffler and relocated the muffler outside of the shed. I thought this was going to be a fairly easy job, but it turns out that it was a little bit more involved than I had expected. 
I was hoping that I could simply clamp an extension onto the tailpipe without removing the muffler, but the Generac muffler is specialized and had a series of holes drilled in the tailpipe to expel exhaust in all directions. So I would not be able to simply put a tailpipe extension over this pipe without modifying the muffler. So once I committed to moving the muffler outdoors, then I had to put a small roof over the muffler to protect it from rain and snow. I did all of the extensions to the muffler using inch and a half standard muffler components from the local auto supply store. I didn't weld anything, I just made cuts and clamped the pieces together with muffler clamps using muffler paste to fill any small gaps. It doesn't leak and the fumes are outside now and I don't have to hold my breath anymore when I go inside to turn it on or turn it off. Also, I'm not breathing these fumes anymore and neither is the engine. The generator is now drawing in cooler and cleaner air from outside for cooling and combustion. This was a day long project, but it was worth the time and only cost about 50 bucks in hardware. The generator is one of the most expensive components in our system. It also is the only part of the system that has a combustion engine attached to it. So it's really important to take good care of it so that we get years of trouble free use from it. For this reason, I wanted to make sure that the generator was in perfect working order by doing all of the required maintenance needed at the proper intervals. One important thing that needs to be checked and maintained is the generator's 12 volt battery, which essentially is a car battery. I replaced the battery last year when it started to fail and I put in an AGM battery with really good cold cranking amps. The battery in the generator is supposed to be charged by a voltage line that comes off the main battery bank in the house, but this year I decided to put an additional charging system on in the form of a 100 watt solar panel and a charge controller. The solar panel lives on the side of the generator shed and the charge controller gives me a real time readout of the battery's voltage and it also keeps the battery topped up every day. The last thing that I had to do with the generator this season was to perform basic maintenance procedures for the engine, which included changing the oil, the oil filter, the air filter, and the spark plugs. The air filter and the spark plugs were both clean and probably didn't need to be changed, but since I had new ones, I changed them anyway. One thing that I found helpful for changing the spark plugs was to use a locking socket extension so that after you screw in the new plug, you can remove the socket from the spark plug without it coming off the extension. I tried this first with a regular socket extension and the spark plug socket just stayed in place because of the little rubber piece that holds it onto the spark plug. I was unable to pull the socket off with my fingers, so I went and got a locking extension and it worked perfectly. With all the maintenance done for the season, we should not have to do much to the generator over the next couple of years or about 200 hours of runtime, whichever comes first. I did order some valve cover gaskets so that I can do a valve adjustment when they arrive. I ordered them from a local supplier rather than from an online source because I wanted to test the service of the local suppliers first. They were prompt to get back to me, they were easy to deal with, and now we get to see how long it's gonna take for parts to arrive from the factory. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Solar Life. I hope that you found some of these thoughts to be useful and interesting. As always, if you're looking to get some more updates, feel free to subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, you're welcome to share those below and we'll get back to them uh, and respond as soon as we can. That's all for now on Solar Life and we'll see you next time.